two coffees deep and it's not even 11 a.m. What's going on everybody? Welcome back. If you're new to the vlog, hey, what's going on? My name's Nick. I'm a videographer in the local Detroit area. I do these videos every so often. Primarily, it has been vlogs outside with like some of my trips that I go on. Uh, but for today, we're gonna do something a little different. If you're like me, you're probably really bored right now because of the quarantine. I'm going on day like 30, Two, 34? I don't even know anymore. I'm losing track, but I've been home for a really long time trying to figure out some things I want to do, kind of get a little bit more creative. I've been using the quarantine as an excuse to not create. A lot, obviously, there's a lot of things going on with people not wanting to do videos and things like that because we can't really get close to people. But at the same time, I could be just doing stuff at home, which is why we're doing stuff today. So today, I want to go over what's in my camera bag. I want to go over with you kind of the things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis to make videos. This is the my go-to bag. It's the one I carry wherever I go to on a shoot, whether I'm making uh, shooting photos, videos, it doesn't matter. This is usually the essentials that I take. So let's just jump right into it and talk about what I carry as my main backpack, what the actual backpack is. So the first is this guy. This is the Peter McKinnon Nomadic Backpack. It is one of my absolute favorite things I think I've, I've bought from like a camera accessory standpoint. A lot of bags have not hit home with me. Uh, I'm very particular about the things that I want to have in a bag and I want everything that I can possibly fit in this thing to come with me. Whatever I'm shooting, I wanna be able to grab one bag that I know has essentially everything that I need to accomplish the job, uh, which is this guy. Inside is also the Q pack, which is something that turns from a regular pack into an everyday backpack, which is awesome. It also has a little art at the very bottom that lets you be able to grab kind of a bunch of different accessories, a camera in here, whatever it may be, but it's a hard case. So it's kind of nice that it kind of lets you be able to transition from the big bag to the smaller bag. So that's, a, that's another bonus. So let's take a look inside and see what actually I carry on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is everything that comes within my backpack. Uh, there's a couple slots that are empty, as you can see from like right here and right here and right here. Um, however, those are usually the cameras, but I'm shooting on the cameras. What's up? So the first thing that comes into play is the additional accessory that comes with the Peter McKinnon Nomadic backpack. There's actually three different ones, which are super helpful because it depends upon kind of what you're gonna be using it for. But the first one is this guy. It is the Peter McKinnon card case accessories pack. Some things that I didn't like particularly about the backpacks that I bought in the past is that they didn't come with anything that organized stuff more. I'm always looking for something that kind of could fit inside of a backpack that kind of lets you kind of be able to be a little bit more organized because I'm a very OCD person. What's this handle? So if you open this guy, I have put all of my action camera items within here. There's a lot of little tiny things that come with an action camera that you kind of need. Suction cups, mounting part of the camera, uh, the GoPro, things like that. Battery pack chargers, things like that. So this fits all of it. I don't have to do anything. Comes with a nice little part top that sits there nice and snug so stuff doesn't fall out. And it fits all of my action camera. Actually, just speaking of action camera, the action camera that I go for is right now the Hero 7 Black. It just came out with the Hero 8. I don't think I'm gonna really upgrade. There's not really a point because this kind of hits all of the things that I needed to do, really. Uh, Hyper smooth is awesome. I can shoot there, it's stabilized. I can run around with this thing without a gimbal and it comes out with super smooth footage, which is mind blowing to be honest with you. Not being able to have a gimbal and being able to free shoot freely with this is insane. So that's the, one of the nicest parts of it. I got my chargers, my card cases, my old Hero 5 session, this is great for FPV views. You have stuff on top of like a person biking or things like that. You can attach this to a helmet, super useful as well. Um, so that's my other action camera that I use as well. So this thing's great. It allows you to kind of double accessorize within the backpack and you don't have to do much more with it too. So super useful. Now the next thing is something that I am uh, really attached to and it's because it's the first thing that kind of ever got me into videos. I never bought a camera initially for my first thing. I actually bought a drone, so I've upgraded ever since. My go-to drone is this guy, the DJI Mavic Pro 2. It is such a great drone. I can't begin to tell you how awesome this thing is. Flies like a dream. 
it really just does the job that I need it to do. So fine, fine, smooth. And when I have control of this thing, it it feels like I actually have control. There's nothing that's ever gonna push it or freeze it or anything like that. I personally really attach the drones just because it <laughs> it feels like a video game whenever you're when you're finding these things, which is why I think I picked it up really quickly because I played a lot of video games when I was a kid. So this was kind of came natural. When I first started shooting, obviously there's a learning curve. Once you kind of get it, it's it, they're, they're a ton of fun. It makes you feel like you're flying and you can kind of go really wherever you want. But this is the drone that I recommend to get just because it's it hits every point that you need it to hit. So yeah, Mavic Pro 2. Which comes to the next thing that is also brought within the Peter McKinnon backpack if you purchase it, which is the Peter McKinnon filter case, hard case. It allows you to be super organized with your filters. Now, hard case obviously allows you to not have to worry about it being broken or anything along those lines. You can drop this thing and it will be perfect in terms of your items that are inside. Now, opening it, it has a bunch of different slots for you to put your filters in, which is super nice. Keeping stuff organized, knowing where stuff is, quick, easy, fast. Anything that can help me kind of get stuff, get me to stuff that I need to get to quicker, being able to use it right then and there is super helpful. One of the filters that I have, which is proven to be my favorite filter, is the Peter McKinnon Variable ND filter. It's just like sunglasses for your lens. So as you get there and turn it, now you can't see. So my face is gone, and then when you turn it, now you can see. So it allows you to put this on top of your lens and keep and maintain your aperture the way you want. Very, very helpful in light situations. Highly recommend getting with this one. It's a bit on the expensive side. When I say a bit, it's on the very expensive side for a filter. You can get cheaper ones, but this is just built well. It's got quartz glass. Highly recommend one of these. Let's talk about the next couple of things, which are probably the most important, is my camera, body, and the lenses that I currently own and use. I originally started with drones, which is weird to start with drones. There's, I mean, I would probably, if I would go back, probably start with buying a camera because you should know the functions of a camera before buying a drone. Anyway, I digress. I shoot on Sony a7 III's. Here's a couple shots of the camera. It is a, it's, it's a workhorse of a camera. And the reason that I can't like pull it out of my camera bag is because I'm currently shooting both of them. These two cameras are insane. My brother and I share the camera gear. He originally bought his camera before I bought the camera. Luckily I had him to kind of give me an idea of what camera I wanted and what made the most sense. Cause there's a lot of things that you have to take into consideration when you're thinking about what camera do you want to get? People always ask like, what's the best camera? Which camera should I get? It really depends upon what you're doing. The reason I bought the Sony a7 III is because it fit an all around necessary need that I had for, to be able to shoot multiple things, real estate, commercials, I mean, this thing can shoot it all. It doesn't really matter what you are shooting on, it works and it's good. Another bonus uh, point of this camera is the price. The price is just, it's too good, to be honest with you. It is a little expensive at $2,000, but at the same time, everything you get with it, it just produces great images. It has an 8-bit color, shoots 4K up to 30 FPS, it's just a workhorse of a camera and it's something that I recommend if anyone is looking to get into video or photos or whatever it may be, it's, it's the best bang for your buck camera right now. It's a lot of research and if you're looking for kind of some recommendations, feel free to give me a, a comment below or, or just directly message me and I'll be happy to help you kind of figure out what you're looking for in terms of a camera and give you the best recommendation. So let's move on to lenses. Lenses for me are where you should probably spend your money first. All the other stuff is kind of like an accessory to the camera. However, everything about lenses gives you the picture that you're looking for. A bunch of different lenses have a bunch of different looks. And that's why when people ask me like, what's your favorite lens? I really don't have one. Each one has its own unique type of quality to it and what can, it can accomplish. So keeping that in mind, let's talk about the first one. First one is this guy. This is the Zeiss uh, F 1.8 55mm lens. This thing, the picture that comes out of it is just actually kind of incredible, to be honest with you. Being able to go down to f1.8 and have a really focused subject while having everything kind of blurred out in the background, this thing kills it with that. Also super fast. The fact that it is Zeiss and is compatible with Sony's, this thing hits the mark when you're taking on portrait photos. Focuses on your subject, nails focus almost every single time, and the picture that comes out of this thing is just, it's just, it's just nice. Um, I also use this thing on 
my side camera when I remember doing interviews at this current time. I wanted to get an 85 millimeter, uh, but I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. So for right now, this is kind of the one that's set up on the off, uh, the off screen, kind of set to the side, focus on the subject on the left and the right side of their face. By the way, this is my first time doing this. So if I sound and don't use the right verbiage, bite me, okay? I'm trying. All right, moving on. The next lens that I, I use are actually both of the ones that I currently have recording right now. So here's this one, uh, and then there's this guy. So we're gonna talk about the one that's up there. The one that's up there is the Sony G Master 16-35 f2.8. This is the first lens I ever bought with my own money. The other ones were the, my brother had. The reason I bought this guy is because of how wide it can get. I originally wanted to start in vlogs. I kind of thought it would be cool to kind of play around with the vlog and see what it would look like and take a stab at it, I guess. And the best way to be able to do that to get the kind of shot that you're looking for, which is super wide, is to get a wide lens. I decided to go with the big Sony G Master lens, which are super expensive. It's a really great lens. The reason for it is for this reason right here. All right, 28 millimeters. So if I wanted to, I can stretch this out and go all the way out this way, which is funny because this is how close it is to the table. Like it's not, it's not much higher. You see, it's like, it's just, it's just right here but it covers all of this space. You can see my coffee mug, you can see a little bit of the edge of the desk. You can see everything, so it really helps. And if I want to punch in a little bit, just to get a, bit, a little bit more of like a frame, I can do that too. 16 to 35 is great for street photography, really nice wide shots. It's gonna run you on a little bit of the expensive side from a G Master perspective, but still, another lens I recommend in your kit that should be essential is a 16 to 35. The next guy is the one I'm shooting on right now, which is actually, our very, very, very first lens. When I say our, I'm saying again this because my brother owned this lens first. 24 to 70. This gives you everything you're really looking for besides maybe a really wide perspective. 24 is good. 24 is still good. Like you can get to 24 right here on this guy. This is 24. It's still pretty good. However, 24 to 70 allows me to punch in. Take this as an example. So if I wanted to punch in really high, it's up, that's 70, it's going on. Or I can go back out to 24 and I still get this nice really clean shot. This lens is great for pretty much everything. I consider it like your medium range focal length lens. You can shoot 24, which is pretty decently out close. You can still get pretty close to your subject with 70 millimeter. And it, again, shoots a really nice picture as well. As you can see, most of this video has been shot on the 24-70 and it looks fantastic. So for being at 2.8, it still gives this nice blurred background back here with obviously myself in focus. So the nice part about this lens is that, again, it covers a bunch of different ranges, 24 to 70. It's your medium focal length lens. It's, it's not shooting too far. It's not shooting up close. It's right in the sweet spot, which is why most people have one of these because it's generally the medium, it's generally the go-to lens for really anything that you really need. You can still vlog on this lens. Problem I have with the lens is that it just doesn't get wide enough to give you a better perspective. It gives you this good overall mid-range focal length, but still keeping it down to f2.8. You can still get really nice bokeh on the back. And obviously you can shoot really anything between 24 to 70. All right, that wraps up everything that's in my camera bag. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a little bit to set up uh, just from like this room perspective. I kind of had to like, deconstruct my room, but I had a lot of fun, I think with the process of making this, it's a little harder than I thought. And I think I just need a little bit more practice, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are looking for recommendations for cameras or anything like that, or just tech gear, I'm a nerd with this stuff and I love it. I literally look at it all the time. So if you are in need of recommendations, feel free to comment below, let you know, or you can direct message me and I'll be glad to give you any recommendations. Um, that's the bag. Uh, I think leaving you off with a cuter note is in better order. So we recently got a puppy. This is Oliver. Oh, and look at how cute he is. Oliver, look at, look at, look at. He's just oh. sleeping. He's a sleeping puppy, but look at. Look at how cute he is! Look at him! Oh my goodness, he's a cute little puppy! Oh. I'm sorry, were you sleeping? So, you can see we've been kind of just chilling inside with the puppy. He's a little tired. 
Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Have a good day. And uh, we're going to get through quarantine together. Bye! Uh, bye! Bye! <laughs> bye! bye. <laughs> and now, welcome to Bridget's channel, which is better than Nick's channel because she just talks about puppies. Are you Oliver? Yeah. <laughs>